All righty. Hello, everyone. How are you? Hopefully you can hear me. I'll just wait for a quick confirmation in the chat, make sure we're all set up. I haven't streamed for about a week, so I was just getting everything started. Thanks all for being here. First thing in the chat room. I don't have a schedule for when I stream right now. I am, I've been traveling, so I haven't been able to make pre-recorded videos. So I streamed last Friday and this Friday. It won't be an every week thing, um, but I will try and let you guys know when I do it. Perfect. All right. Well, I realized as you guys were all coming into the chat that um, I set up the stream so you could see me work, but I also wanted to show you what I've already worked on, which it's not perfectly set up for, but I'll try and show you. If you're not familiar with the Animal Eyes Challenge that I started over on Instagram, it's hashtag 100 Animal Eyes, and it was inspired by uh, specifically Arlisha working on the Meds 100 Heads Challenge, which was started by another artist. But there are so many challenges uh, with 100 of something to grow your skills and practice as an artist. Hello, Grace. I'm so glad to see you. Um, so we are doing these or i did these 100 animal eyes you're welcome to join us i was trying to get them all done i wanted to do 10 a day for 10 days um last uh, yesterday i was not feeling well um so i did not get as far as i wanted to i only sketched out my eyes and then this morning i worked on some base coats so i could show you what that looks like in terms of the process so today I'm gonna walk you through uh, start to finish on a couple, but typically I just wanted to kind of show you my, uh, my approach for this. So 100 eyes is a lot, 10 eyes a day is a lot when you're doing these full paintings and full disclosure, it takes me like four to five hours a day. Um, so I don't recommend it if you have like a day job, um, I would definitely pare down to like two or three eyes a day or even one if you wanted to do one eye for 100 days. Um, whatever fits your needs, I really want this to be a flexible challenge for you guys that fits your specific limitations. But anyway, I hit a roadblock yesterday, it was the first day that I wasn't able to do everything. Um, but normally I would sketch out all 100 heads, or uh, all 100 heads, 100 eye. Oh my goodness, guys, 10 eyes, 10 eyes a day. I sketch out the 10 eyes in the morning. I do the first coats of the washes and then you get these kind of creepy things here. And then I do the second layers, the third layers and finish off with white highlights. So I'm gonna flip through and show you all the other ones that I've been working on since day one. Hopefully we can get this in here. Thanks all for, for coming into the chat. Yes, it is very cold. I believe it is 18 degrees out where I am as well. I fly home tomorrow, um, so I'm hoping that they have a little bit warmer weather weather there for me. <laughs> so this was my first day. I did felines and canines, so I have got the cats on this side and the canines on this side, and this one was really fun. I really enjoyed this day. There's so much color and variety, and then I realized that as I moved through the mammals portion of my own challenge, there's not a set list. You can do whichever ones you like. Um, it was it was getting harder to find animals that were really varied. So I wanted to do other feliforms and caniforms, which are cat-like and dog-like animals. But I found that a lot of these eyes were really, really similar to each other. So if you look here, like the red panda and um, which one was this? Is this the binturong? I think this is a binturong and the fusa. They all have like the same iris and pupil and like just everything about them is very similar. There's black eyes that are really similar. I'm going to be putting all of my thoughts of the entire challenge up in a post over on Patreon for my patrons as well as high res scans when I get home. So if you're interested in seeing that, you can head on over there. There's a link in the description below this video. Um, then I moved on to primates. Oh no, negative 23 degrees. Yowza. Is that Fahrenheit or... Um, the 18 degrees is in Fahrenheit, so it's below freezing here. Uh, I don't know what the Celsius translation is, but it's cold. <laughs> um, so primates was another day that was really similar. And honestly, most of it was pretty tedious. Um, I did find that I got really bored doing all the brown eyes, but things like the Tarsier eye and the Japanese macaque was really cool. I throw, threw in the human eye so I could get a little pop of color. Then, um, let's see, what are you guys asking? Oh, it was a snow leopard. Uh, well, there was a snow leopard and a husky. This was the husky, this is the snow leopard. 
Um, and then I moved on to ungulates, and then we got a little bit more variety back into the mix because they have different shaped pupils, and so that was really fun to explore. We've got the goat eye. I know a ton of you asked for goat eyes. I did it right here. <laughs> and a lot of you guys like the zebra over um, in uh, on Instagram. And then we've got other mammals. So I did five days of mammals, which in hindsight was probably too many. Um, I really enjoyed the following pages that I'll, I'm about to show you. So um, I, I wish I had determined more time for them, but I think I honestly will do an extra page or two after this just of eyes that I didn't get a chance to work on. Um, so other mammals, we had things like an aardvark, a hedgehog, the porcupine I think is my favorite from this page elephant, platypus, uh, lots of fun ones here. And then we got to move on to the really colorful things. So I did two days of birds. This is the first day. Um, we've got like parrot eyes, a cassowary. There's three owl eyes. The first two are pretty easy to identify. I'm curious to know if you guys can spot the third one. Um, there is a cockatoo, a king vulture, lots of fun stuff here. Um, my second day of bird eyes was even more colorful. Sorry, I'm trying to get this like squared onto the camera. I know it's at an angle. I'm sorry. Um, so this was really fun with just the different colors that we had. Most of the pupils are round though on the birds, so not a lot of variation there. And then, let's see, what does Joe say? I need to review on my animal classes, it's been a while. This is a great way just to get familiar. I've learned so much researching for this project and coming up with my animal list. I do recommend if you wanna do this challenge um, to pull a grouping of photos. So I used to pull them like every morning, I would pull the 10 that I was going to do for the day, but about halfway through I switched and I was like, you know what, I wanna make sure I can get a good variety over the whole rest of the course. So. I planned out the rest of the 50 pictures um, over the weekend between the two weeks that I did this challenge, just so I would have a nice variety. The reptiles eyes are probably my favorite page. Um, there's so many differences with pupil shapes. Uh, you've got the vine snake here that's really, really unique. The geckos have some really weird pupils, um, some really, really vibrant colors. Um, so I really enjoyed working on that one. This uh, chameleon eye I was really excited about. We went to the zoo over the weekend and a chameleon was just posing for me and I was like, perfect, thank you. <laughs> um, and then uh, yesterday was supposed to be aquatic reptiles and amphibians, so frogs, toads, turtles, uh, and crocodilians. But as you know already, I wasn't able to finish that, but I will work on that over the weekend. I have a nice long flight tomorrow. It takes longer to go west than it does to go east. So my flight is an hour longer going home than it was coming here. So I'll finish those up on the plane. And that brings us to today where we're gonna be doing fish, insects, crustaceans, and cephalopods. Um, I don't think I have any of the crustaceans planned out for the actual stream, but I do have four eyes that we're going to work on, hopefully start to finish, crossing our fingers. The stream will go for about two hours. Um, after that, I'm gonna need a break and get some food and all that stuff, so I'll be finishing up off stream, but I figured I'd at least try and do a few start to finish so you can see my whole process. So let me go ahead and take a look at chat real quick and make sure that we're all up to speed. Marley, were you talking about the king snake one here? That's a California mountain king snake, baby. Super, super cute. <laughs> I'm sorry, Grace. I know it's very early for you West Coasters. It's 7 a.m. Uh, you don't have to be here if it's if it's too crazy for you. Um, oh. Oh. I did mess up, didn't I? <laughs> I did the stream last week at 11 a.m., which was 9 a.m., West Coast, and I meant to do the same time again, and I realized I started at 9 instead of 11. I apologize, but hopefully our international friends who weren't able to make the last one, like our friend here from Thailand, um, they get to drop in. So I'm sorry, Grace. <laughs> sorry, West Coasters. I messed up. I flubbed. I was thinking 9 a.m. back home. All right. Well, I hope that that works out. Get a little variety in our stream time for you. 
Um, I have the reference photos to the pictures today I'm working on in the description below. So there's four of them. The first one is the fish eye. And uh, I also have a supplies list. So a lot of you guys were asking what supplies I was using. They're the same ones I mostly use, but I made a specific dedicated list over on Amazon so you can find those easily. Thank you to my friends who answered this question for me last week in chat who know me very well. This is the white that I'm using. That is also in the link. I also have some new Jelly Roll pens. Um, I had been really against these pens for a really long time. And then when Steve did his comparison over on the Mind of Watercolor of uh, the whites that he likes to use, he really liked this pen and I couldn't understand why. And he said that the bolds, the number 10s, are better than the standard ones. So I got some of those. Maybe we'll try them out today. We'll see. Um, and then I'm using my Da Vinci watercolors, which are in a ginormous palette that is going to have to sit off stream just because we can't see it. I'll also be using the Pentel water brushes, and uh, I think that about covers it. Any questions so far? We have people from all over the world. That is great. I love that we have so many, like Australia and Thailand today. Grace, is Lindsay doing a stream at 10 Pacific time? Hopefully not Eastern time. <laughs> Grace, I got those online. Um, there was a big, t oh good, good. Okay, 10 a.m. Pacific, uh, Pacific time, we will be done by then. So that's good. Okay, so uh, we've got our jelly rolls here. These ones I ordered off of Amazon. I don't think these are on the list because I haven't used them at all yet. Uh, if I do use them, today would be the first day. All right, so uh, I have another video. If you haven't already seen it, I forgot to link it below, um, but it was just a couple videos ago where I was talking about my new Skillshare class where I drew uh, animal eyes for you guys to follow along. So if you are... Um, wondering kind of for more instruction about how I make animal eyes, there's a Skillshare class for you. And in that other video, there's a link so that you can get uh, two months free to the platform if you are new. Uh, but basically I start with a circle and then I just build off of the eye from there. This fish eye that we're going to be doing is pretty circular in and of itself. So we're not gonna be adding too much to this one. Let's see. Ah, uh, hi there. I'm sorry that you can't make the whole stream, but hopefully you can catch part of it. I know there was a couple streams I was doing and it was really, really late um, here, like 5 p.m. Pacific time. And then some of the people on the other side of the planet can catch those because it's early in the morning, but then it's harder for people here to get it. <laughs> hey, Lily. So actually, now that I'm looking at this fisheye, there's really not much to draw. A lot of what we're gonna add is gonna be color. So I'm just gonna draw in a couple little landmarks for us. I admittedly am using a pretty terrible pencil for this challenge. I didn't realize when I was packing for this trip, I just threw a Reeves pencil in my bag and I thought it was, I don't know, HB or lighter and it's not, it's a 3B. So this one smears really, really badly. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I do love the Reeves pencil. I just wouldn't recommend something so dark. If you have a question in chat, make sure you type in the word question in all caps. And then your question. So yeah, guys, I don't think there's much else to do for this first one. I'm using a piece of, um, I would use printer paper if I had it, but this is just a piece of like B paper. I use it for swatching a little bit, but also protecting so I don't smear the graphite because this is such a dark pencil. <laughs> question, this is the question format. Thank you, Grace. Yes, Joe, I agree. Um, the lighter pencils tend to be a little easier to use for sketching. All right, so I'm gonna skip this fish because most of that's gonna be color. The next one I have here is the Nautilus eye, which is a weird one. So I might wanna move this down from my original, sorry, I'm shaking the camera, from our original location. 
um, just because most of the detail is kind of around the eye as a whole. I also do that if you're doing 10 eyes a day, which I don't think many people are. There's a couple people that are sketching 10 eyes a day. Um, I do like to draw out all my circles before I start the entire day, just so I make sure I have enough room on my sheet of paper for it. But if you don't care if they fit on a sheet of paper, then that's fine. All right, so the Nautilus has a circular eye area. Oh, thank you, Grace, for linking that video. I appreciate it. Um, the Nautilus has like a flattened disc, I guess. I don't know what I would call it. I've not done any other eyes like this. A Nautilus is a type of cephalopod, like um, like a octopus or a cuttlefish. Question, have you been using mainly DS paints or a variety of brands? This entire challenge was done in Da Vinci paint, not Daniel Smith paint. Uh, that's the paint that I brought with me for my trip, and I've been wanting to get more familiar with some of the colors that I got recently, uh, which I also showed off in a video. So I've been using that this whole time. <laughs> All right, thanks for stopping in. Ooh, Grace. I actually didn't know what a Nautilus eye looked like in detail. Like, I couldn't picture it until I looked up pictures of it. Is there a pencil brand that I recommend? No. I mean, you can use whatever you want. I do like the Reeves quite a bit, but it really doesn't matter. Cosmic made it into chat. Wonderful. <laughs> Heather's getting some feline interruptions. Understandable. I know it's hard to get Da Vinci paints in other countries. I know that they're working on it. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, I was looking for my eraser and it was sitting directly under my hand. <laughs> yes, very creepy, but pretty. That was the theme of, was it yesterday or two days ago? Like the outlines for the both the first reptile day and the second bird day were really, really creepy until they got <laughs> more layers of paint on them. All right, so I'm just drawing in the main shapes here. I'm working quite a bit slower than I would normally work on my own. That's mostly because of my drawing angle, the way I'm sitting at the paper. I'm kind of hunched up and everything. Um, but imagine me going a little bit quicker, or maybe this way you can draw along with me. Again, those references are in the links below, so if you want to sketch along, you are more than welcome to do so. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like seeing the finished eyes. All right, next up we have a reef shark. Um, I will say, when I was looking for references for today for the insects and the sea animals, it was really, really difficult to find ones that I could use on stream. Uh, some of you guys have been asking this over on Instagram. I've been using copyright free or my own photos when I can, but if there's an animal that I want to study, I have been going to Google for that, but those images are not okay to like profit from. They're someone else's images. So while I'm using them to study from, I don't feel comfortable putting them on stream on like a monetized video. So all the images that I did pick today for the stream are copyright free, but they were few and far between. So if there's an animal that you wanted to see today, um, it originally, I did post this on Instagram as like a viewer's choice day and it absolutely is. I, a ton of you guys wanted to see fish and insects. So I wanted to make sure to get those in today, but there were some I just couldn't do due to copyright issues. So when you're doing your own challenge, you can use Pixabay, you can use Unsplash, or if you're just doing it for yourself, you can also use Google Images or whatever other form you need to find pictures. Just make sure you credit those artists appropriately, those photographers. So how has everyone's week been? Are any of you that are in chat working on the challenge? I've really enjoyed seeing the Instagram hashtags. I've been checking them every day. I love that we've got a huge variety of mediums. There's people who are doing markers. There are people who are doing pencil and graphite, and there's people who are doing digital even. And I've just really loved seeing everyone come together for it. It's been really fun. Uh, 
The reef shark also has a pretty easy sketch. I'll put in more detail with color. The thing with working with such a dark pencil is that I can't put in too many details because if the paint is lighter, it'll show through. So we're gonna leave it at that, I think. I also normally don't label the eyes. I just wanted to make sure I had as little room to mess up on stream as possible. So I wrote the little names next to them. How do people react to you being an artist? How do people like to underestimate artists? Um, I've luckily received a lot of positive feedback on it. Um, it's definitely surprising to a lot of people, especially those who I haven't seen for a while um, that knew me as a zoo educator. It's definitely not common <laughs> just to like up and up and leave your job and, and try something else. But I've always done art related things, even as a hobbyist. So people have been really encouraging. Luckily, I know that it's not seen as a career for a lot of people, uh, especially what I do where I create content online. Um, I've actually been like uh, encountering some situations recently where I've had to like list what I do for a job and I'm like, well, what do I put? I don't want to put YouTuber. That doesn't sound good. An artist doesn't sound great either. So <laughs> I've defaulted to uh, educational content creator, but um, it's definitely interesting. It depends on who I'm talking to is how I present it. Oh, Ali, I'm sorry that you're not feeling well. I hope you feel better. I hope your eyes are keeping you company. Uh, question, uh, would I consider publishing a book with all the swatches and mixes? I've been thinking about it. Um, I would want it to be something that is worth your guys is like time and money and something that isn't already available and there's already so many wonderful resources that are available so um i've been trying to like very casually think about some takes i could put on that um if you don't already know though the next uh the last stretch goal over on patreon that i'm currently working on trying to ha have implemented is that i'm digitizing all of my swatches my swatch binder with over 500 swatches it's going to take a while but I'm making an online resource of that. So my patrons have access to each of those pages as they come up. I only have yellow so far, but I'm gonna be working through the color families. And then once the whole thing is ready, I will release it to the public. <laughs> I would love to do something art-based too, like an animalized book I think would be really fun. That would probably be off in the future a bit, but based on this project specifically, I want to take some of my favorite designs and make sticker packs. So let me know what you think of that idea. <laughs> Thanks, Grace, for linking that Patreon. Uh, perhaps we did a Kickstarter. Oh, uh, sorry, you fit, you continued your question. Kickstarter campaign, PDF format, hardcover softback. Yeah, I don't know anything about publishing a book. I've done very uh, minimal, like trying to find publishers and things like that. I'm very, very picky. And if it was a color swatch book, I would want that to be like absolutely perfectly printed so that I'm not sending out false information. I know that can be really difficult. So that's why I kind of lean more towards doing the online swatch resource and then doing like an art based book so that the colors aren't as necessary. Hopefully, hopefully that helps. Hi from New Zealand. I'm sorry that you can't sleep, but thanks for joining us. <laughs> Yeah, I hadn't been able to do a video because I was traveling, Heather, um, but I was happy to like wrap up here. You guys obviously don't have to do it in my time frame for this challenge. You can start anytime you want. It can be any format you want, any number of eyes per day that you want, however it best fits your schedule. If you want to join us, just hashtag 100 animal eyes over on Instagram. I won't be able to share posts indefinitely from the challenge, but I've been sharing them while, uh, like each day at the end of the day, I try and go and pull some and share them to my stories. That kind of thing. <laughs> yes to stickers. Uh, exams next week. Good luck with your exams. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, cool. I'm glad that you guys have interest in the stickers for the eyes. Hi, Emma. All right. So we have our eyes drawn. Um, the last one is a damselfly. 
the reference photo when you click on it is going to say dragonfly, which is a common misconception, but damselflies are in a different little group of them. <sighs> All right, we ready to relax with some watercolors. So I think the most tedious part of this challenge is just, I can show you on my phone here, I have folders set up in like my Google Drive that just have all of the images uh, for a specific day, but they're not, I can't like order them, they're by date. And so um, I just have to scroll back and forth to find the one that I need. But if that's the hardest part of the challenge, I think we can manage. And I picked this particular fisheye, one, because there are very few fish pictures on Pixabay, unfortunately. And secondly, it had pinks and purples in it, which I haven't gotten to do much of in this challenge. So I thought it would be a nice, colorful change. Ooh, do like a big print of all 100 eyes. I don't think I can do that just because I used... Um, copyrighted images, unfortunately. Some of my favorite eyes are also copyrighted images. So I can't do that, but I could take the ones, I could try and find a good balance of maybe like a selection of 20 or something that are either copyright free or for my own references and um, make a print of those if that's an interest, if, if it's okay that it isn't the whole collection. <laughs> I would love to do all of them, but some of the animals that I'm working on are so unique that there just aren't stock photos of them. So have to respect that and, and work around it. <laughs> Would you guys be, yeah, you're interested in a, like a selection of them. Grace, you are way too kind. Thank you so much for all the links. Oh, magnets. That would be fun. Magnets are, um, quite expensive to produce, like to have to stock. I don't think they offer those over on Redbubble yet, right? I don't think that's a thing that they do, which is weird because they do so many things or maybe I just missed them. Yes, my Etsy shop is closed right now. It'll be open by Monday, uh, maybe Sunday if I can remember to do it sooner, but <laughs> probably Monday. I have a new print order that needs to be input. So a lot of you have been asking for uh, various prints that I've been out of stock for a while. Those will all be up on Monday. But Redbubble is ready for you anytime you like. All right, thanks for stopping by. I hope you have a good day. Thanks, Paige. <laughs> All right, this fishy contrasts really nicely with uh, some yellows and oranges on the skin around the eye. I have a heater going on under the table for my feet, but somehow it is like not, <laughs> not working real well and I am pretty darn cold. You know, it's really interesting seeing the different uh, stats for the streams that I've done. When I do polls on YouTube, the winner is usually my evening on the Pacific Coast. Um, so like 4 or 5 p.m., which when I do streams at that time, though, don't have as high views. And then the 9 a.m. Pacific time, I think I've had the most luck with, even though it doesn't usually win in polls. Um, last week we had a wonderful turnout of like 150 people, 
And then this time frame, I messed up on. That's not anyone else's fault but my own. <laughs> but uh, we have about 80 people sitting in chat right now, and I thank each and every one of you for being here. If you're enjoying the stream and want to help it get a little bit more exposure, you can go ahead and give the video a like. That helps out. And if you're finding us for the first time, welcome. And I hope that you find some more stuff on this channel that you're interested in. Oh, really? I don't watch a lot of streams here on YouTube. I watch streams over on Twitch, though, um, which is funny because I prefer to stream on YouTube. Well, I can't really say that, right? I've not, I've not streamed on Twitch myself, but you guys are all here. I figure, I feel like I would have a hard time connecting with you all over on Twitch. I think I asked that a while back in a poll, like how many of my YouTubers know Twitch. <laughs> um, I'm in the central time zone right now. It is 9.43 a.m., on the Pacific Coast, where I'm from, it's 7.43 a.m., which is never a time I'm awake for a stream. <laughs> um, I, I see some requests for naming the colors. Uh, honestly, I'm bouncing back and forth so much, it would, I think it would get really redundant if I listed all the colors I was using. I have a palette of 42 colors here. I'm using a lemon yellow, a warm yellow, a pink, a redder version. Uh, a violet. Uh, the colors aren't as important. If you want to know the colors in my Da Vinci palette, I have another video on that. And if you are interested in the Skillshare class, I do list every single color in those tutorials uh, over on Skillshare, and they're all linked in that class description as well. I watch Tori streams when I can. They're not always at times that I am able to watch, but I popped in the other day and I, I try and go there when I'm able to. I uh, used to watch as many of Lindsay's streams as I can. I heard she has another stream today, so I'll pop on over to her channel after we're done here. Um, I Make sure you put the word question so I don't miss your questions, but someone asked if I wanted to do a review on Arteza. I did a review on their paper and pens, and there were some term changes. I think that's okay to say. There were some term changes they wanted me to agree to, and I didn't agree to them, so they asked me to take down those videos. I'm not sure why the videos were still positive, even if I didn't want to be part of their affiliate program anymore, but they asked me to take them down, so I did. Thanks, Grace, for that Da Vinci video. Grace, how are you and the puppers? It's been a while since we've gotten to catch up. Ooh, lots of Philippines viewers today. We must have found the Philippines time. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Heather. I appreciate it. Luckily, cat photos are very easy to find. There are lots of cat lovers in the world. It gets a little harder when you're looking for like a mantis shrimp. <laughs> I do hope you guys check out over on Instagram though when I am done with this spread. There are some really cool eyes on here that I just can't paint because they're not royalty free images, but they're really, really fun. Oh no, did you have a question, Joe? I might have missed it. Question, question, question. I don't see anything for a while, Joe. So if you want to retype it, I would be happy to answer it. Sorry if I missed it. I'm a one woman operation today. I'm painting. Chatting and reading. <laughs> oh, thank you. I haven't painted them for a while. They've got, well, some of them have a clear coat. I painted them with a clear coat earlier this week, and then we went to one of those sensory deprivation salt floats earlier this week, and it did this weird thing where it just, like, peeled off sheets of the, <laughs> the top coat. Like, it didn't flake off. It just, 
like the whole thing peeled off. It was interesting. Has anyone done a sensory deprivation flow? It was a very unique experience. Any tips for controlling the staining colors as you are here? Staining colors. I'm trying to process Joe. Sorry, I might be a little slow on the uptake this morning. Um, I don't, I guess I don't really have as many troubles with the staining colors in this challenge. There's been maybe a couple times where it's been problematic. But this paper is pretty good. I'm using the Pentel Aquash. Uh, sorry, nope, that's this. <laughs> I'm using the Pentelic watercolor book, and it lifts pretty easily. So I haven't had a lot of troubles with staining. But if you have a different version of that question, I'm not quite getting the answer. Let me know. This stream will be up on the channel after it is finished. So just be aware that all your comments in chat will be available afterwards for those watching the replay. Oh, good. I'm glad your puppy is becoming a little more independent. Oh, cool. I'm glad that the, the sensory deprivation float worked well for you, Renee. <laughs> Grace, that's really cute. So I was really hopeful because those floats are supposed to be really good for people with chronic pain. But what I found for me was that I had a rib out the day that we went. I mean, it's still out. I haven't been able to go to my chiropractor since I'm traveling. Um, and because the water is so saline and you float to the top, it was like pushing my shoulders forward and I was getting really agitated. Um, so I don't think it worked as well as it could have if my rib hadn't been out, but otherwise it was a pretty cool experience. Will I ever try oil painting again? Well, I have oil painting supplies, but, uh, I mean, they're not going to be at the top of my priority list. If, uh, I have a mood that comes across that I might try it again, that's fine. I know that there were some things that I could have done differently. I'm not opposed to it, but it's not like on my mind right now. I have a lot of other watercolor projects I want to get done. I know you guys want a water brush control video. I'm going to try, I know it's not soon, but I'm gonna try and do a Skillshare class on that. It's just such a difficult concept to tackle and it's something that I find really hard to explain, um, which I think is why it's so such a, like an elusive talking point. There are some classes over on Skillshare that have water, water control videos. I watched some of them, not all of them. Um, so you might wanna check those out if you're over there. But I do, I do have plans to make a water control video. Um, I just need to figure out how to best do that. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. I appreciate it. <laughs> do I still recommend White Nights as the top watercolors for beginners? If they're available to you and affordable and you feel comfortable picking out your colors, that's a lot of asterisks, though, and I know that. So if you want to go with a more precise you know, predetermined set, that is totally acceptable as well. Um, just whatever fits your needs. I do wanna, um, and I think I will be doing an updated top favorite brands video in the next month or so. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for that. Which watercolor do I hate the most? Are you talking brand or color? My least favorite color is Mission Gold's Yellow Ochre number one. <laughs> it's a combination of, of pigments. It's just really heavy and opaque and ugly, I think. Their Yellow Ochre number two is fine. I know, Grace, but it's really bad. It's like a really, really, really gross yellow ochre. It's heavy and muddy, and I just don't like it. 
I think it's because of my love for yellow ochre that I dislike that color so much. <laughs> um, I also really, really, really disliked um, like those kind of baby poop green type colors. I've come around to PY 129 and use that one pretty regularly now, but those weird like three or four color blends that some brands have of that brownish green color, I'm not a fan of that either. Um, you guys probably know on my channel, I'm not going to ever come out and say like, oh, I hate this brand of watercolor. There are pros and cons to all of them, depending on your needs. I know that's not the answer you want to hear, but I'm not going to just straight out bash a brand. Um, that being said, there are a lot of really chalky beginner brands that I just don't recommend because I think when people start with them, even though they're affordable, they might get discouraged because of the quality and think that all watercolors are like that when they're definitely not. Um... So, yeah, that's my, my, my politically correct answer. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, will, I will get that video to you guys shortly. They might have changed it, too. I feel like um, when I saw in Otto's recent video, she was comparing all the yellow ochres. It didn't look as bad as the one that I had tried, so I don't know if they changed it from the one that I used. I don't have my swatch binder here to check. <laughs> Do I have any recommendations for teal, aquas, and purples? Um, it's, it's hard. Um, so teal and purple are actually my favorite colors. Like if I'm out in the world and someone asks me what my favorite color is, it's like deep, rich, warm purples and cool tealy bluish green colors. Um, that being said, I don't paint with them very often. So I don't have, like, I can't give you a recommendation on what I think is the best color to use on your palette because I think that's going to change based on your preferences and how they mix and those can vary quite a lot. Um, I love most versions of Thalo Turquoise though. I think they're really, really beautiful. Um, I've actually replaced in a lot of my palettes, Thalo Blue, which would be like the cool blue spot in my palette. I've replaced it with a single pigment Thalo Turquoise PB16. Um, I don't have a specific brand or anything, but uh, Otto just did a video on Thalo Turquoise as well. So you can check out her video see how they mix and everything. How are you guys liking this angle? It's different than before. So hopefully, I know it's not straight over, but hopefully you can see behind my camera because before I would like be blocking the eye with my hand when I was doing a lot of detail work. Uh, purples, I like the reddish purples. I really like Theo Indigo Violet, which is an odd one. It's PV88, uh, Rose of Ultramarine, things like that. And I also love for painting, like on a palette, my first choice of purple is PV23 Dioxazine Violet. It's just a really great mixer. If Daniel Smith is number one and Windsor's number two, would M. Graham be number three? That's my favorite lately, and it's easy to tint transparently. I haven't used their yellow ochre very much, Joe, so I'm not able to say for sure. But good memory on you for remembering that uh, <laughs> Windsor Newton is actually my second favorite version of that color, which I know is odd for me, given that I don't like a lot of their paints, but their yellow ochre is solid. Cannot complain there. <laughs> okay, bye, Lily. Glad you got to come in for a little bit. Have I ever painted a fennec fox? Funny you should ask, because I was trying to find a picture for this challenge of a fennec fox and couldn't find a good one that I really liked. Uh, but it's on my list to paint one. They're really fun. And I worked with them when I worked at the zoo. Not directly with them or anything, but like they were there and we had babies the year before I left the zoo and they were super cute. So definitely want to work on a painting of them. Is Schmika Academy still your favorite student brand? Um, Schmika in general is pretty muted. You get the most out of them when you layer. Um, like I said, they're good for academy paints, but they are really expensive, so um, they're not the first student brand I'll recommend. I really like White Knights for that price point, even though they're an artist grade paint. Uh, 
Wow, jump from Koi to Schminka Hordam. That is a huge jump. I'm so glad you're so happy about them. That That's massive. That's great. <laughs> What's the difference between Cobalt Teal and Cobalt Turquoise, or are they the same? They're different. Um, the Cobalt Teal is a brighter blue. The Cobalt Turquoise is like a paler colored. It's really weird because in watercolors, teal and turquoise seem to be switched from what we would use in everyday language. So turquoise is a stone that's really bright blue and teal is a darker color, but in watercolor it tends to be flipped. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can reach my cobalt teal from where I'm sitting. Let's see if I can show you this real quickly. This is cobalt teal. I know it's blurry, guys. I'll move it into frame in a second. And this is cobalt turquoise. Does that show up? Hopefully. Cobalt turquoise is deeper. Uh, teals tend to be green, more green. Um... The reference photos for all the animal eyes are in the description below. We did a fish, we're working on the nautilus now, and then we have a shark and a damselfly. Oh, is Cyan here? I missed it. Hi, Cyan. Which student paints that would you recommend for travelers of plain air sketching? I'm not the best person to ask about plain air sets. I don't paint out in the open very often. That being said, I really love portable painters. Um, you have to fill them with your own paint, but they're really great. Uh, they have their own water cups they can balance on your leg or on the ground or wherever you need them to balance from so i really like the portable painter that is in my favorites list over on amazon if you need to find it if i want to start with schminka artist watercolors what would be my five or six colors i should have <laughs> it's a difficult question and not one that i can really answer while i'm trying to multitask and do a stream but i have lots of videos on my top uh favorite colors there's a whole series called my top five favorites and you can look in those for different colors that I enjoy. I also have several Schmincke videos. You can check those out and get an idea of what you would like. I generally recommend a split primary palette, but that changes based on what you like to paint. I talk about that a lot in my other Skillshare class, um, color mixing for watercolors. And then there's a second one about building your own palette. And that talks about the colors that you would need for mixing and what, um, alterations you might want to make based on your subject matter. So I go into pretty in-depth in those videos if you want to check them out. Yep, I have lots of Sennelier videos too. There is a recent one. So check back. I have, I know a lot of you guys don't know this. I've asked the poll question before, but if you look at my videos, like if you go to my main YouTube page, there's categories like product reviews, um, tutorials, my AAC pieces, swatch with me's. And if you look on them, the banner that I have on most of my thumbnails is a different color based on what type of video it is. So that makes it easier when they come out if they're in your recommendations. If it's a review, it's like a teal color. If it's a tutorial, it's orange. If it's a swatch with me, it's like a coral pink. Um, and they're broken up like that on my main YouTube page. So you can go there, you can find everything that you'll need. They're all there, color coordinated and waiting for you. Hey, Ian, no worries. Never have to apologize, but we're always glad to have you. How do I stop being bad and start being good like you? Well, first off, thank you, but also don't put yourself down. It's lots of practice. Uh, I've had my channel for like two and a half years now. I've been painting for about four years, and um, I've always been interested in art, so I just... There's a lot of experience and you just have to, I know it's a stupid answer, you know, but I just have to say you have to practice and find an instructor that you really enjoy, whether that's me or not, and, and look at their tutorials and try and learn from them and just absorb, absorb what you can. We are living in a wonderful age of social media and while that can be a negative thing sometimes, 
a lot of times it's really great because we have access to so many things online that we wouldn't have access to before. So take advantage. Uh, if you haven't already used a Skillshare like free membership, uh, lots of YouTubers have them, including me, where you can get two months free to try out the platform. And um, that can be a really good source if you're looking for, for topics on teaching you more in depth than what a lot of YouTube videos can go into. We're limited by kind of our format and the fact that a lot of people are looking for YouTube videos to be, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. These streams obviously are longer, but the majority of my content is in a more easily digestible format. I am using um, the cobalt turquoise that you guys just asked about for this one here and Payne's Gray. It is usually cheaper to buy a full set of pans uh, and then supplement with colors that you need. But with White Knights that I mentioned earlier, um, I don't like their pre-made sets. So I have a video where I talk about the colors that I bought from them and the ones that I would recommend. So you can get nice, transparent, life-ass colors. That's the only brand I would really recommend putting together your own set for um, right off the bat. Otherwise, you can kind of get a, a pre-made set, see what you like, see what you don't, and then kind of supplement from there. But there's lots of videos on YouTube. I've got a lot of resources as well, talking about what colors to start with, what colors I think are useful, what colors I don't think are useful. I've got the whole color spotlight series if you want to learn more about individual pigments, if that's something that interests you. I think I missed a big chunk of chat, so if I missed your question, you can retype it. Heather has EDS and Reeves are frequently pop out. Have you tried a tennis ball? Yes. I love my tennis ball. It is great. <laughs> oh, wonderful. We have someone in chat who went from Windsor Newton Cotman to Schmink Hordam. Huge jump. Absolutely. Hey, Heidi. I've seen your posts over on uh, Instagram, I think. I hope your father's doing okay. Ian picked out his own White Knights paints. Do you like them, Ian? My camera is, uh, it's not the best setting here because unfortunately if I move the table, it wiggles the camera like I just did there. Um, at home, I attach it to a bookshelf that's nearby my desk so that my direct movements don't shake it, but it's on a microphone arm. I have a little tiny webcam that I'm using for this particular stream, and so it's really, really light, and I got a fairly inexpensive, it's not great, uh, but it was like $15 over on Amazon, and um, it it gets the job done, it holds, holds a small camera. I would love to be able to upgrade to a heftier one. Actually, for Christmas, I did get a heavy-duty microphone arm for my Yeti back home. So I've got a nice sturdy arm for that one, but my camera's still on a, a desk mount. And honestly, um, for most of the videos that I record ahead of time that you guys see that are edited together nicely, that's recorded on my camera phone on a, a clamp on the desk as well. I think I missed chat again. My apologies. <laughs> Uh, question, I know you've added honey and glycerin, but have you made your own watercolors? And if so, why do you buy them and not make them? Um, so Kevin, I have a myriad of chronic illnesses and I physically have, in particular, very bad ribs and shoulders. And so I can't mold paint. I tried a little while ago. I have a beautiful selection of uh, pigments that was gifted to me. And I would absolutely love to be able to mold my own paints. Um, like making my own watercolors would be like a dream come true, but I just can't. Uh, I have physical limitations for that. So it's not in the cards for me, but that's okay. We have to have to recognize our limitations and not put push too far past them. Oh, cool, Ian. I'm glad that you enjoy them. Sorry, I had to readjust. Get a sip of water. 
You guys, how has it been an hour already? I have nothing to show for it. We need to get our butts in gear. All right, you ready? I'm gonna hit my pedal to the floor, whatever that expression is. <laughs> Uh, I have noticed, I think I mentioned this in the last stream, if you were here last week, um, but I am in St. Louis right now, and it's freezing cold, but that means that the heaters run all the time, so I've actually found that my paints dry a lot faster because the air is drier. So if you see me go over an area that you wouldn't necessarily associate with being dry already, that's probably what's going on is this, the air is dry and the water brushes allow me to work in thinner layers of water. So I'm not adding as much water to the page as I would with a traditional brush. I really don't understand what's happening with this. <laughs> I have the heater on my feet and sometimes they're perfectly fine and then other times they're like freezing cold. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Yeah, Grace, I need I need to work faster. I need to work faster. I'm never gonna get eyes done at this rate. Got ten a day I gotta do. <laughs> yes, kicks it into high gear. That's probably a better way to say that, isn't it? It is. It's hard to stream because you have to make sure your watch your washes are smooth. So when I miss parts of chat, it's because I'm trying to make sure a layer lays down really nice and smooth. And then I can't look up, and then I've missed it. And then if I go back, then I get behind again. <laughs> I've had to use one of, oh, you guys asked what my least favorite color is. There's another one. It's not like my most hated color, but I don't enjoy it, and it's never on one of my palettes. Uh, I've had to use a lot of like leaf green type colors lately in the last couple days of spreads with the birds and the reptiles. This one is mixed from phthalo green and Hansa yellow. Since I do not dedicate palette wells to that. <laughs> it's way too easy to mix, in my opinion. So I've never painted an insect eye before. This is the damselfly. I'm going to do an entire base wash of the bright green. And then we'll layer other colors on top of it. And by very strong contrast, the the like bridge between the eyes is a very dark brown. So I'm going to use burnt umber and sepia for that. Yes, circulation issues are not fun. <laughs> I have Raynaud's, so my hands and feet are always cold. And I put the heater on to try and heat up my feet during the stream so I wouldn't have to complain about it. And it just is not doing its thing, I guess. Same thing for this area as I did with the eye. I'm using the lightest color that will be in this area and spreading it over everything first. And then I'll go back and add the darker colors over once it dries. Using a very light touch, there's hardly any water being put down on my paper. I do think I have to adjust this heater though, guys. I'm gonna have to get up for a second. My feet are like frozen solid now. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know, Grace, right? I need Jenny to come visit all the time. Could be some noises, possible camera juggles. I could put you on um my be right back stream, but screen, but then I wouldn't be able to talk to you guys. Let's try that and see if that's any better. <laughs> yes, gotta take care of the feet. They're important. I'm even um I talked about this last week in the stream. I'm even standing on like a box that I brought that had mailers in it that I did all my Patreon mailers in. And I mailed those off already, but I have the box left over. I've been standing on that so that my feet aren't directly touching the floor. 
because the floor is colder than the air above the floor. <laughs> it's 18 here too, Cynthia. <laughs> or it was when I started the stream. Yesterday I encountered the first, uh, for the first time, a day that the warmest temperature was at 9 a.m. And then it got progressively colder. Had not experienced that before, so that was interesting. <laughs> yes, I miss California weather. Definitely. All right, so now I need uh, a richer, brighter green for this damselfly. I'm going to mix in a little bit more of my phthalo green. This isn't fully dry, but if it runs or cauliflowers, it's fine uh, because of the texture of this eye. It's like really loose and flowy, and I'm okay with that if that happens. Yeah, cold, cold weather is, um, I mean, it's cold. <laughs> it's not the best. Uh, it wouldn't be so bad, but for these streams, I have to turn off the central uh, heat because it makes too much noise. So the entire house gets very, very cold. I have the spot heater for my feet, but I don't, I don't like it. Yeah, we're with you, Kristen. We're right there with you. A couple years ago, we had snow and sandal weather within four days. Yes, I am learning that that is very much uh, a St. Louis thing. <laughs> I mean, last week, right? It wasn't even a couple years ago. Last week, it was like eight degrees. And then on the weekend, it was 68. That's a 60 degree swing. Like, that's insane. I honestly couldn't believe it. I was, I'm like, oh, wow, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> I'm mixing together some pearling green and some phthalo green. I don't know what kind of fish it is. I'm not good with fish, like fish ID. And that was just what came up on Pixabay. And Pixabay is often not labeled properly or not labeled at all. So if anyone else in the stream knows what kind of fish that is in the link, you can let us know. It's some kind of tropical fish, I imagine. <gasps> our Leisha's here. Hi, our Leisha. Yeah, yeah, Cynthia, same here. It's crazy. I don't know how you all deal with it all the time. Oh my gosh, negative 26. Yowza. How are you doing, Arlisha? Are you able to take your little break yet. I know you are still working on some videos. I have not been able to keep up on my videos lately. Um, I'll be able to catch up next week when I get home. The The link for the, the reference photos in the description, guys. This is reference photos. There's four of them. The fish is the first one. Life, life tip, guys. If you're ever wondering about links or supplies, they're not always in the description, but always check the description. They're probably there, and if they're not, then the uh, streamer is probably willing to add them to the post stream, but I made sure they were all there before I started. Aw, I'm glad you could stop by. Oh, 
Oh, I'm sorry you were sick. Glad you're feeling better. Hope you're on the mend. I'm hanging in. Yesterday was real rough, but feeling a little better today. A little sad, though. I'm leaving tomorrow, and it's hard to believe it's already been two weeks. I definitely miss cricket. I miss being home. But I'm going to miss Beth when I leave, too. <laughs> Ariel says it's quite nice there. She feels guilty. That's how I always felt in California when everyone's talking about their freezing cold winters. I'm like, ah, it's 48 outside. That's cold, right? <laughs> oh, okay. A discus fish. Hopefully that's right. If someone wants to double check just on Google with like a quick image search to confirm. Ah, I just smushed my box I was standing on. I told you all about. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Cosmic. I know. I wish that I had more time for things. I was supposed to be even busier, and I backed off this week just because everything was so insane, but I hope to be back uh, soon, so I'll let y'all know when I'm back in the area. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Cosmic. I missed that. It's a discus fish. Perfect. Thank you guys for confirming that for me. I just, I didn't look that closely apparently. I was trying to get the stream up and running. It didn't get to all the, the info, but I appreciate you guys confirming that. I did see the word discus earlier, and I didn't associate it with the fish question, so that's my bad. I was like, why are people talking about the discus in here? <laughs> As in, like, the discus throw. Is the camera shake too bad, guys? I know it's wobbling, but last week you, some of you mentioned that it was hard to even see it, so... Let's make sure it's not too bad today. Cool. I'm glad. Question, is there a deadline for the 100 Animal Eyes Challenge? Nope, you can do it whenever you like. You're welcome to go back to the beginning of the stream after we're done and I talk a little bit about it. I specifically set it up with all of us Spoonies in mind um, that I want you to be able to do the challenge if you want to do it in whatever time frame you need to. So I chose to try and do 100 eyes in 10 days, so 10 eyes a day. I missed that yesterday because um, I wasn't feeling well and I had really tried and pushed the other days and stayed up really late some nights to like 11.30 working on these. Um, but yesterday I just needed a recoup day and that's fine. I drew them all still, so technically, <laughs> technically I still did my, my 10 eyes yesterday, I just didn't finish them. Um, but whatever works for you. I have a post over on Instagram that explains everything. You can see it in my feed. I probably should have linked that in the description below. That would have been helpful. I'll try and add it after the stream. It just gives you like a general rundown on the terms, but whatever medium you want, whatever format you want, <laughs> 75 degrees in Lake Placid, Florida. Lucky, lucky Kayla. All right. I think that's pretty good. That's more in depth than our other eyes even so far. So we're going to go back over to the fish. I no longer need this piece of paper because I just need it to stop smearing the graphite. And once the, the watercolor layer is over the graphite, um, we can move on. 
would you guys like me to, hmm, I don't know how to phrase this question. I'm not going to have time to finish all four of these eyes in a two hour stream, I don't think. I don't think that's realistic at this point. So let me know if there's a specific eye you really want me to see finish. I'm going to work on the discus just because we were talking about that so much. And maybe let me know one other one, either the nautilus or the shark. Or the dragonfly, I don't know, whichever one. Sorry, damselfly. And uh, I'll skip to working on that one. But typically, again, just to explain my flow and the process for this, for those of you who want to follow along, um, I do all the all the sketches, all the first washes, all the second washes, and then all the highlights and then minor details that need to be finished up. So I just kind of go in order like that so that it speeds up the process. It's kind of like an assembly line. If I do one start to finish, it's going to take me a lot longer than setting up 10 and working on all 10 at the same time. <laughs> Nautilus. Jaguar eye is not an option. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not one of the four that are on here. The reason I didn't do a jaguar eye in this particular challenge is I've done one on another sketchbook page and I've even showed it here on the channel. So I tried to pick uh, something that was a little bit different on my cat day and I could only pick five on the cat day. So it was domestic, cat, a lion, a tiger, a snow leopard, and what was the fifth one? Anyone remember? <laughs> uh, oh, a lynx, because they're so different. I was trying to get a lot of variety. Forty-five degrees in Palo Alto, so it's still a little cold back home. Jellyfish don't have ice. <laughs> All right, the Nautilus is the vote. All right, we'll work on the Nautilus after the fish. Jellyfish is actually my Patreon theme this month that the patrons voted on. So in addition to this challenge, every month we have the ILC challenge, the In Liquid Color challenge uh, for my patrons. And all my patrons are welcome to paint the theme of the month that they vote on. We're doing animal ABCs. So this month it was all animals that started with J. And um, then at the end of the month, I share them all on my story. So you might've seen those before if you're over on Instagram. And anyone on Patreon is welcome to join us. So if you wanna do that, you're welcome to. <laughs> So right now I'm just layering in this purple around the edges to really deepen things up. I hope it's close enough to see detail. I can try and move you closer, but I worry. Camera shake. Are you still in focus if we're right here? I think so. All right. Have a good night, get some rest. Sure, if you want to, Grace, that would be great. Any Spoonies in the chat? It was Grace's idea, I believe, uh, to start this chat. We have a nice little community over on Discord if you struggle with pain management and artwork. You can join us over there if you like. Grace will link you in just a moment. Thanks for offering to do that. Box jellyfish have some form of an eye like organ. Yeah, a lot of them aren't drawable. Um, so I got some requests for some like really weird things about eyes that were like you can't see them or like they're not clear. Um, a lot of people requested a lot of rodents too, but almost all like the rats, the mice, the hedgehog, they all look very, very similar. They're small, beady black eyes. So I did the hedgehog. Um, but I didn't do all of them just because it would be really repetitive. What I was really trying to aim for in this challenge was getting as many different eyes as possible so that I could study how different they all are from each other. And I mentioned earlier on in the stream, and I'll mention it in my blog post that I do for my patrons about some of the eyes that ended up looking really similar and that I could have been more differentiated on so I could learn a little bit more towards the end here and have more room to do more fish, more insects, things like that. Uh, I will be doing that extra day just on my own. I'll probably post it to Instagram and Patreon. 
to show you um, some of those those catch-alls and I know some of you were asking for like there's a lemur eye that someone wanted and I wanted to do the lemur eye I meant to do the lemur eye and it just got misplaced in my folder and I didn't get a chance to to add it in um, there were a couple other ones I know that were requested a few times that I didn't get a chance to do and there's ones that I wanted to do too so That is a good question. Uh, me, myself, is it Andy? Andal? Can't read from here. Um, we do have a couple of people that if you have a spouse or loved one that you care about and you're part of this community, we do allow that on like a case-by-case -case basis. We do have to make sure that um, just everyone there is protected and private, so we reserve the right over there to kind of judge that individually, but it, you're absolutely welcome to come come on over there. Let us know a little bit about yourself and um, we can try and help you out if you're specifically looking to help out your, your loved ones. A spoonie is, um, it stands for the spoon theory. I've talked about it in other videos, like in my uh, 25K Q&A that I did. It's a term for chronic pain patients, uh, people who have chronic pain, regardless of what illness it's from. Uh, Spoonie is just kind of like a catch-all that stands for the fact that there was an analogy used that we only have so many spoons to use a day and we have to figure out what we want to spend them on. Um, it was based on like a restaurant example of a, a girl talking to her friend. So you can look up the spoon theory on Google. You can find all that information. But yes, you're welcome to, to come on over and we'll talk to you there. <laughs> Thanks, Grace, for linking the spoon theory. Today's my last day. It doesn't have to be your last day. <laughs> We've talked about it a lot. You can start this challenge whenever you want. I chose to do it in 10 days. You don't have to do it in 10 days if you don't want to. Just however you can manage to do your 10 eyes or your 100 eyes over the course of however many days you need. I just want people to be able to like learn and grow and study and support each other. Check out the hashtag. So I specifically made this a Spoonie friendly challenge. You can do it in whatever time frame you need to do. I have done a go eye. If you watch the stream back, I flipped through all the, the pages. And I specifically pointed a go eye because so many people were asking. <laughs> can link the introductory post from Instagram. Grace, you are awesome. Thank you for all these links today. You're a rock star. All right, Kristen, thanks for coming by. So I ended up putting this pupil a little bit high, um, and that's not where it is in the reference photo. We can still make it work, but just so you guys know, if you're looking at the reference, this is definitely higher up than it should be. I'm going to go into an earthier yellow, uh, a gold ochre from Da Vinci. The first yellow we used was pretty bright, and I want to put in some yellow colors, but a little softer. There's a little bit of iridescence um, here on the fish, and I'm curious to know if any of you at home have any tips for me using a totally standard watercolor palette that doesn't have any metallic colors or anything like that. If you have any tips on how to draw that, I can use a little bit of white towards the end when I do the highlights, but I'm curious to know if you have any tips for me. Glitter. <laughs> Bye, Catchy. 
Sleep well. I don't have any glitter, Grace. I am sorry. I have iridescent medium at home, but it is not here. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. Do you have to head off? Yes, Grace, I'll try the try the white at the end. All right, you wanted to see the Nautilus. So let me get this in focus. How small can I make the dots? Pretty small. They're manageable. That's not in focus, is it? Let's see. If we pull back. Is that in focus? Hopefully. Bye, Ryan. Have a good day of work. So yeah, it does seem like this time frame was a little bit on the early side. I'll keep that in mind, but back home, that's not going to be a problem. <laughs> I am not a morning person, so being up at, at 7 in the morning is not going to happen. Do I prefer Quinn Rose or Quinn Magenta? I use Quinn Rose more often. Quinn Magenta is more of like a true primary color in that you can get a wider range, but I find just some things that I paint, Quinn Rose is more useful. I don't use a lot, as much as I love rich, warm purples, I don't use them very often in my painting. <laughs> oh good, Marley, I'm glad it was a good time for you. Yes, I will use the white, the white, paint at the very end. It is so hard with an international group of awesome people to find a time that works for everyone. So I think the last three streams that I've done have all been at different times. So hopefully that catches someone different every time and everyone can feel a little included coming to them. <laughs> yes, the dioxazine violet is my most used purple. It's just a very good mixing color. And as much as I love the warm purples, I just don't use them to mix other colors very often at all. Yeah, sometimes the links on videos get chopped off. YouTube shortens them. And it's always funny to me specifically relating to copyright free um, music because they'll put like a description in their video like, oh, use this description for your video. And there's like a creative common license, but it's too long to fit in the thing. So it's a broken link if you copy paste. <laughs> so you have to actually go to the link recopy it and then put it back in but i wonder how many content creators actually do that i'm just using glazes of ultramarine and then uh, burnt umber to deepen up some of these areas i'm glad that you guys all like the nautilus so much Yeah, that's kind of what I have going on here right now. Um, someone suggested light washes and then white at the end. So there's purple over the yellow here. We'll add a tiny bit of blue to our white when we go over it and it should do okay. Hello, welcome. 
I'm trying to add enough of some shadow tones because if you look at this eye, there's extremely little actual white on it. It's mostly shades of gray. So I'm just going around and just very lightly trying to add those layers. Really suggest the shape. I'm going to use some sepia for the shadow behind the eye. It almost just looks like this disc is floating. Within these different pieces of the, the body. It's really interesting. Is anyone else painting right now? Just watching the stream? Enjoying chat? Making lunch? <laughs> hey there! Welcome, welcome. Eating breakfast, Sarah says. Yeah, whenever I catch Lindsay's streams, when she used to stream, it was 9.30 a.m. on the West Coast. And so I would be making breakfast usually and it was always funny to have like my laptop propped up over where I was cooking and like trying to type and multitask. I always kind of chuckled at myself about that. <laughs> Oh, thanks for for turning me on at work. Hopefully that's okay with your employer. <laughs> I never worked a job uh, where I was allowed to have my computer on. At the zoo, it was owned by our local city, and so it was a government agency, and like you could not do anything on your computer that was not work-related. And I know a lot of people in the tech industry, including some people that are very close to me, and they're like, oh, yeah. Got YouTube on in the background all day, you know, listen to podcasts, whatever. I'm like, oh, that's nice. Oh, sorry, I missed you, May. Welcome, happy Friday. Oh, Cynthia, I missed you too. Hope you're recovering okay. Everything's going well. Dinner time in Scotland. Exactly. <laughs> As a zoo educator, I bet you could imagine I wasn't at my desk very often. usually in the classroom or training or something. But there was a lot of time we were working on curriculum, but it's probably best you don't multitask when you're doing something like that. I do that now, but I'm not as productive. 
In fact, actually, when I work on the color spotlight scripts, when I do all that research or an AAC video, I usually turn off everything else so I can can really focus and make sure the material I'm writing is coherent. But for almost everything else, I have something on in the background. Streams are always weird in that regard because I usually work with either a podcast or a YouTube video or music. And then when I stream, it's just, just my voice. <laughs> A little intimidating. We're allowed to watch, listen. Oh, nice. Finally managed to make a stream. Hey, Carolina. Um, I'm working on a Nautilus eye right now. Yeah, I had a, a really strong connection to a few of the animals. I mean, lot, lots of the animals that I worked with, um, but like a few in particular that really stood out. It's been so long since I've been there and I realized uh, the animal that I had the biggest connection with, it's actually been quite a while since she passed away. Um, it came up in my stories recently. She passed away in December of the year that it happened. Um, but it was an opossum named... Uh, Lindsay, and I talk about her in my AAC piece where we talked about opossums. I painted her. So you can watch that video if you want to hear a little bit more about that. I was also pretty close to a lot of the reptiles I worked with. I'm a reptile person. I like them. I like teaching people about them since they're misunderstood a lot of the time. I also got a chance to work with a great horned owl for 12 years. So I really enjoyed working with her. Steve is here. Hello. I just watched your gouache video, Steve. Finally, I'm behind on all my YouTube videos. I found it immensely helpful. Been working on my own gouache collection, but uh, hadn't gotten to all the brands, so I'm glad that Steve has that resource. <laughs> Reptiles can be really hard to care for. Just when you're able to get your own pets when you're an adult, make sure you research them really carefully. A lot of people get reptiles thinking that they will be really easy to care for or that they won't live very long, but a lot of reptiles can live for over 20 years, so it's a big commitment, and just make sure that you're ready for that. Eva just did her first live stream this week. It's a bit not weird to have. Yeah, it is. So with Twitch, you can have music on, which uh, is is nice. But for YouTube, any music that you have in the background is room for copyright infringement. So um, unless I put together like a specifically uh, copyright free playlist, but then the, the quality wouldn't be very good for you guys. Uh, so I just don't listen to it. But it's weird working in the silence. <laughs> It was. I, I loved the animals I worked with so much. And that's true of everyone that works there. I know that zoos, I've talked about this in another video, so I won't go into it too much here, but a lot of people give zoos a bad rap and roadside zoos, sure, like those are not great, but um, accredited zoos, the people that work there have to have you know degrees and years of training and volunteer work. And like they, they have put in the dues to be there. They want to be there. They are working to make sure that their animals have the best life possible. So it's not like you can just drop out of school and decide to be a zookeeper. It's it's a lot of hard work, and uh, people that are there really want to be there. <laughs> oh, thanks, Grace, for Lincoln Lindsay the opossum up there. Allie, you have eight reptiles. I think I knew you had a few. I don't think I knew you had eight, though. That's true. I have seen that cosmic that some Twitch streams have the entire audio muted if it's a certain copyright infringement. Oh, cool. I, I hope you like the video. Love finding out that opossums eat ticks. Yes, opossums eat ticks, and you want them in your yards, people. If you have an opossum, you are blessed with the power of tick eaters. <laughs> Yeah, 
They're such interesting animals, and they're the only marsupials in Northern America, North, North America. There's some in South America and Central America, but it's pretty cool. Everyone loves marsupials, right? I find like if you start with that, people are more open to learning about them. <laughs> Oh, I missed something, you guys. Chatting so quick all of a sudden. Baby opossums are very tiny. <laughs> hello, hello. I can imagine they would set off the cat, Steve. <laughs> Very intriguing. It's so interesting. So the one that I worked with, the one that I had a special connection with, Lindsay, she was huge. Um, she was a really big opossum. And I just went back to visit my friends there and they showed me their, their newer opossum who is freaking tiny by comparison. She looks like a baby even though she's not. And, um, or he, sorry, he. And um, it was so interesting seeing the size difference that they can exhibit. So if the smaller ones come across, I would absolutely think a cat might be interested in them. <laughs> yeah, definitely um, you want to make sure that the zoos that you're supporting are are keeping up to code and it's sad that they can't be in the wild but there's a lot of reasons that they can't be for a lot of places and um mo most aza accredited zoos are involved with the ssp which is a species survival program so that they breed a lot of those big cats and make sure that their populations are are healthy so that if something happens with the wild population that they're covered or in the case of some species that are too far gone in the wild they can breed and repopulate so um they did that with california condors they did that with blackfoot ferrets where zoos were entirely responsible for like building up the populations and now those animals exist in the wild because zoos had breeding programs and i just think that's the best <laughs> rachel welcome to the channel so glad you're enjoying the content Yep, Heather, they're different from possums. Talk about all of that in the video. Oh, I'm sorry, Rox, to hear about your rabbit. Eleven's a nice old age for a rabbit, though. It's very hard to get attached, and opossums in particular, I think I talk about this in the video that Grace linked above, Opossums only live for like two years, and so the fact that I got so attached to her, it hurt so bad when we lost her because she was only like two and a half years old, and um, it doesn't get any easier, and <laughs> I have no idea how I got so attached to her in particular, but it's definitely hard for that type of turnover. But the zoo that I worked at actually has like a local reputation for being like, they started off as a baby zoo like in the 70s or whatever and so they had a lot of young animals but then when I was working there they were like the geriatric zoo because all our animals are really old and a lot of people have misconceptions about that as well that um you see animals that are really really old or like they're losing hair at the zoo or something like that and your your tendency is to feel bad for that animal but honestly like we had animals that were five or seven years past their life expectancy in the wild. And so a lot of people just aren't used to seeing that. Like older people obviously lose their hair and don't look as, as sprightly as they did when they were young too. So just keep that in mind when you're at zoos. If you see a very geriatric looking animal, they're probably just well past their life expectancy. <laughs> Yeah, black-footed ferrets, their story's incredible if you look it up. Um, they were almost completely extinct in the wild. They rescued like the last, I don't know, dozen or so that were in the wild and they breed them back in captivity and then released their numbers so that we actually have black-footed ferrets uh, in the U.S. again, which is pretty cool. 
They are illegal in some places, ferrets as pets, so just be aware of that. California, New York, I think, um, it's illegal to have them in those states. I can't speak for other places, but in California specifically, um, there's several species like ferrets and hedgehogs that are illegal because of the fact that irresponsible pet owners, if they were to release them, which happens all the time, you get turtles that are released in ponds and outcompete turtle. Anyway, they become an invasive species because California has such a nice habitat that ferrets and hedgehogs would outcompete native species. And that's why they're illegal in those areas. <laughs> well, I don't know, Ian, I've never pet a Tarsier. I definitely wouldn't do one without permission from a trained individual. <laughs> uh, they're not pets by any, by any stretch. I remember that in I must have missed what that comment was relating to. Oh yeah, the opossum comes to visit you. So May, I did a Tarsier in my primates day. You can see like a better picture on uh, Instagram, but this is what their eye looks like. They're pretty cool. You've probably seen like there's like a meme video that goes around of them like opening their eyes like really, really wide. <laughs> um, So, they make their rounds. Grace, have you seen the cheetahs that have, or have you heard about the cheetahs that have the dogs, like the companion dogs? Yes, absolutely. Ferrets are very sneaky and get out quite easily. I agree. They're, we should leave them in the wild if we can, if they're safe there. Question from the room, has anyone found as an market yet? I have not seen them on the market yet. I don't know when they're coming out. Zifrank is hilarious. A disclaimer for someone who hasn't seen his videos, they are not work safe or child safe, <laughs> but they are hilarious for adults. <laughs> All right, I think it is time to break out our white. So, where did my brush go? Oh no, there it is, okay. Yay, yeah, Grace, I just thought that program is so amazing. And when I learned about it for the first time, like maybe nine years or so ago, I was just so in awe that they do that for them. It's really cool. Oh yeah, Pallet Junkie, welcome to the channel via Steve. He was stopped by earlier. I don't know if he's still here. So I'm just getting some of the opaque white out of the jar. It gets quite firm and you have to dilute it with water. Oh, Rex, I'm glad that the live stream is helpful for you. Aw, thanks, Steve. All right, so I've got my little size 2 detail brush. This is a Perla Escoda. I zoomed in on my reference photo. And I'm just going to look for areas of highlight. There actually aren't very many white areas. Um, there's a teeny tiny little rim. Just ever so delicately place here. Steve, I think you weren't in the chat when I mentioned it earlier, but I did pick up some of those jelly rolls you recommended. Haven't gotten to use them on a painting yet. Probably should have used them right here. <laughs> I'm, I'm a creature stuck in my habits. Creature of habit. Whatever, whatever that proper phrase is. <laughs> Yes, Arlisha, this is my favorite part. It's the best part. It really makes everything just come to life. 
I'm going to layer in some more black while I have my detail brush as well, nice and thick. This is, sorry, Payne's gray, but effectively black. They, um, so Steve, they start off really weird. All of them have like a gunk on them. Did yours have that when you got them? Like I opened up the package and they all have like dried ink around the tips of them. I can clean them off and it works, but it didn't look real professional. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Let's see. So I actually learned something really interesting about this black paint. I'll tell you in a second. Um, let me get out this jelly roll so I can show you. Can you see, I'll put it against the black. Can you see, like this is a brand new pen out of the package. It's a, it was a six pack and there's just like white ink all over it. So I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I just have the worst luck with jelly rolls. Like I didn't like them before. And then I got this pack that just has ink everywhere. And I mean, the, the pens look fine, but I don't know. <sighs> Anywho. Yeah, these did not have uh, plastic on the tips. They just came covered in ink. And I can get out more, like there's three more in this pack that I haven't opened. I've opened three, all three so far have been covered in ink. Let's see. Ah! <laughs> I just sent a cat flying across the room. Yep, all of them have it. All of them have white ink on them. So, I'm very glad that they work for Steve. I'm still not sold because I seem to just get duds every single time. <laughs> Okay, so this black that I have been using, it's the only dark that I have in this set, and Da Vinci doesn't have a wide range of darks, which I know is a plus for a lot of people um, who don't really care for black. Uh, but let me try and find an example of this. This is not specific to Da Vinci's paint, but I learned this while researching some black pigments that PBK6, which is the black that's used in this paint's gray, is uh, a completely opaque black. And so it's very different from other blacks that you can kind of see translucency through. So if you look at this cassowary eye, I don't know if it's gonna reflect on camera properly, but do you see how flat that black is? And sometimes that can be good in what you're looking for, but if you want something a little glossier and a little bit more um, luminous, I would recommend staying away from PBK6 or, or Payne's Grays that have PBK6 in them just because I noticed that throughout the challenge that I was having these issues with these textural differences. And then when I was researching the PBK6 for another purpose, um, I actually found that out. So I haven't done a color spotlight on black just because I don't have very many of them, but I found that really interesting. Hi, Samantha, welcome. <laughs> Unfortunately, Cricket is not here to play with the cap that flew across the room. Is that why we mentioned Cricket? Oh, Grace asked about Cricket. Um, Cricket is probably sleeping, possibly playing with her pet sitter. She might be there by now. <laughs> uh, I miss her greatly. I haven't seen her for two weeks. I'll be home tomorrow and get to see her again. Cassowary terrifying. Yes, they're true dinosaurs in my opinion. <laughs> Definitely the closest thing we have to a dinosaur currently on the planet today. Uh, Denise, the glop of ink is because they traveled. Interesting air pressure and whatnot. So I wonder if I had gotten them from a local store if they would have been the same. All right, Ariel. Yep, we're going to have to come to a close here. I should probably stop reading chat and keep working on my highlights. <laughs> I use the Uniball Signo and have been using the Uniball Signo for like two years. The reason I wanted to try Steve's recommendation is because the Uniball Signo re-wets and I don't mind that for paintings, but when I work on my bullet journal spreads, uh, they rub off on the opposite page. So I would ideally love something more permanent so that it doesn't do that. 
Uh, I know Steve specifically said in his video that he doesn't like that they're reactivatable. Um, this ink that it's ink, it's thick gouache that is also reactivatable. So I'm very used to it in my paintings and kind of rely on that, but I can totally understand why you wouldn't want that to happen if you want to put down a highlight and have it stay there. Hey Robin, yep, we're coming to the end. We've been streaming for almost two hours. Ian has a black horse to paint. I did do a tutorial on Patreon about the horse. That's not on YouTube though, so I apologize. Um, Ian, since you're a mod and you've done so many amazing things for me, if you can email me or private message me on Instagram or something, some way I can send you a link, I can give you a, a peek. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> But you've done so much for the channel. I'm happy to send that over to you if you want it. Question. You've had some weird gunk collection on your watercolor paint tube and smelling gross. Stuff on my gram. Oh, have I? Um, I've heard that that can happen. You do want to be careful when you're closing your watercolor tubes to make sure that there's no... Um, paint stuck on the cap because it can get your cap stuck on them and dry that way. I don't have any problems with mold, but I know Tio has talked about that. He lives in a much more tropical area, so you can check out his videos on that. Okay, let's try this luminescent spot. I'm going to take a little bit of this white ink. I don't know if you can still see it. Sorry, it's off camera. I'm going to take a little bit of this white ink and pull it over to my palette, and I'm going to mix in a little bit of phthalo turquoise. I need to get out of the habit of calling this ink, since I learned that it's not ink, it's gouache, basically. <laughs> but I keep calling it ink. And I'm mixing up that mixture over on my palette. I would be happy if I got a gouache white instead of a watercolor white. Watercolor white I find in my style of painting is particularly useless, but white gouache is very helpful. I know you weren't asking me, but that's just my two cents. <laughs> yeah, Sarah, cassowaries are amazing. They're also one of the only animals that Steve Irwin was ever afraid of. <laughs> They are scary, scary birds. All right, guys. Well, it's not quite the same effect. I don't think we can ever quite get that luminosity, but can go over it with some iridescent medium if you have it or some like pearl white or something like that. Yeah, white watercolor. I don't particularly like it. Some people like to make pastel colors with it, and if that's your jam... Go for it. It's not my particular favorite, but it can be useful if you want to mix just lighter versions of transparent watercolors. But I find use for gouache everywhere. Huh. I know that you can contact Imgram. They're pretty good about getting back to you if you're having any trouble with their products. All right, we're gonna work on this Nautilus. Let me flip back over to my other view so I can make sure <laughs> that you are in focus, which you are not currently. Hi, Otto. You're just catching our tail end of the stream. We're finishing up. I'm glad to have you here though. It was my bad. I started early. <laughs> Two hours ahead of schedule due to the time change. Uh, not time change, but time zones. I just forgot from last week. I was in my nine o'clock rhythm. All 
Oh, thank you. I'm glad that you like the texture in the Nautilus Eye. It's a lot of fun to paint. I really like these uh, flatter textures and this isn't a wrinkle, but I kind of painted the same way. I've said that a bunch of times. I love painting wrinkles. They're probably my favorite texture to paint. Yeah, we got lots of awesome people in the chat right now. We've got our awesome viewers. We've got Arlisha, we've got Otto, we've got Ian and Steve. Having a good stream day. There is a highlight that runs all along the top edge of this bottom shell. I tend not to do straight lines of white because I don't want them to look too out of place, but... Oh, I see. I saw me that your the red was the gouache. That's definitely a mistake. I would contact them. I think you already said you were going to. It does absolutely. Um, so Carolina said that white watercolor gives my color a different vibe than watering it down, and that's why some people like it. Uh, it's definitely a different texture. So if you like it, you could do that. There's nothing wrong with it. If you don't like it, then you want to avoid doing that and just watering down instead. It's just two different looks. Robin says she's amazed by the different pupils. Oh, sorry, I hit the camera. Uh, absolutely, that's one of the things I've loved so much about this challenge. Scaly anteater is becoming your favorite animal. Oh, how cool. I always loved when I was teaching classes at the zoo and we'd ask like favorite animals and people would come up with totally weird ones. I always loved that. Question, do you prefer a sap green or a bright green? Who can answer that question? <laughs> Any of my long timers can tell you. I love sap green, specifically Daniel Smith's sap green. I do not care for bright greens. Let me ask what animals you are working on. Otto, we worked on, um, this was a discus fish as identified by chat, thank you chat. And um, this one that I'm working on now is a Nautilus eye. I'm gonna be putting together a resource for all my patrons uh, once I get home and can scan everything in. They'll all be labeled. I'll talk about my insights of um, like what I enjoyed or what I noticed working on all of them. So that is coming in the near future. <laughs> yes, particularly the old version of sap green, but their new version of sap green is the closest that I have found to the original. I tried a lot of other brands hoping to find something that I liked, but Daniel Smith still has the best version in my opinion. <laughs> no, it's a little better than okay. I'll give it more than that. I was hard on it at first, but it's it's lovely. <laughs> yeah, sap green for sure. Gold ghost crab. They have really weird pupils. I'll have to try and remember to get that one. I do have a crab on my spread for today that I'll be working on. So I'm excited for that. A male parrotfish. Very cool. Have to look into that. Like I mentioned, the fish were just really limited for what I could find as copyright free images today. Have I tried Turner watercolors? I have a very old, old video that is gonna be painful to watch, so I shouldn't even tell you to look it up, but um, it's a speed paint, it's not a full review. Um, it's of a character called Brightwing from the Blizzard universe, who is a fairy dragon. And I used the Turners for that painting. And I said I was gonna do a review of them and then I apparently lied to you guys for like two years and I apologize because <laughs> I never did that review. I still held on to them so that I could review them for you, but it should probably tell you guys something that I've held on to them for two years and not found or made time to review them. I'm not, they're not my favorite. They're okay. They're fine for the price point, but I think there are better brands out there. 
<laughs> Grace, absolutely true. I've loved your slow acceptance of it from nothing will be as good as the original to I accept this change since nothing else comes close. Yes, that is exactly the the process that I went through. Heartbreak to acceptance. Did I do any insect eyes? I've got the dragonfly or the damselfly. Sorry, my splotchy hand is in the way. This is going to be the damselfly. So that's an insect. We just didn't get to finish it on stream yet. Stream voted for the Nautilus, but I will have it available over on Instagram later today. Yeah, I agree, Otto. Turner's, it's hard to get a really good flat wash. Like, you absolutely can't argue with the price. The price is great, but, I mean, you're going to lose something when you drop down that far in the price point. Why are most handmade paints opaque? Otto can probably do a better job answering that than I can. But basically, it has to do with the fact that human hands are not as... Uh, I don't know the word to use here, but I mean, a human hand cannot replicate what a machine can replicate in terms of like fine pigment particle size. And that's just a characteristic of handmade paints that a lot of us love about them, that they're unique and opaque and differing, but they are definitely different from what a machine is capable of, right? <laughs> You'll keep an eye out for it, Robin. Wink, wink. <laughs> Yes, and like Otto said, transparent colors are really hard to mull. I've heard that a lot, too. I love these spots, you guys. Spots and stripes are, like, always my favorite thing to add, and I just think they're so fun. The core sap green from the swatch wowed me. Yes. Um, so I think I talked about this a little while back, but I have no idea what video. I loved the core sap green when I first swatched it. And then when it dries, it dries a lot flatter than the original. So it's still a, a strong contender, but it does have a flatness to it that the original didn't. Oh, I'm so glad you guys like the Nautilus eye. Yeah, I was reading in auto about uh, Thalo colors this weekend for another project I'm working on. And they were talking about the sheen of them and that Thalos just tend to dry. If you put them on too thickly, they're always going to have that sheen to them. So if you're joining us uh, now <laughs> that we're wrapping up the stream, I did mention earlier that I'm thinking about making some of the eyes from this challenge that I did into stickers. So if you're interested in seeing that, let me know in the comments below this video once it gets published, which ones you'd like to see. You can try and tell me now if you're in the chat, but I likely won't remember. So <laughs> wait for that comment section and let me know. Um, I am limited to the ones that I have uh, permission to use. So I ha they have to be copyright free or my own photos. So not all the animal eyes that I've done in this challenge are going to be available to make into eyes uh, for stickers or that print that we talked about a composite print earlier. Um, but I will do my best to try and match up fan favorites with ones I have permission to share. So thank you, Grace, for that last reminder to hit the like button. If you're enjoying this stream, I've had fun with you over the last two hours. I wish I could stay longer. I wish I could do more with you. I really wanted to get those four eyes done. But like I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, they do take a long time to work on and that this isn't a short challenge by any means. You're welcome to spread out the challenge. You can do one a day, two a day, whatever you like. Ten a day is definitely a challenge portion of that of that phrase where it's it's a lot of work, but uh, it's really rewarding. I can't wait to see them all done. I'm going to be finishing yesterday's that I wasn't up for doing yesterday on the plane tomorrow, and I should have those all up on Patreon to show you guys uh, after the weekend, and I'm really excited to do that. So let me know if you have any last minute questions in chat. I'll stay here for another couple of minutes and just wrap things up. I want to thank my mods 
who are awesome, who came out. My voice is getting froggy. It's been doing that a lot here. I don't, <laughs> I'll just be talking and then all of a sudden it, it turned into a frog. Um, but thank you to my mods for being amazing. A special thanks to Grace, who has been linking like crazy in the chat for everything that you could possibly want to find relating to what we've been talking about. Um, thanks to everyone who stopped by and asked questions and kept things lively. Any last minute questions? Are we good? I hope that you guys enjoy the 100 animal eyes question, uh, challenge, not question. <laughs> and, um, I'll see you guys in the next video. I don't have anything pre-recorded, so it'll probably be later next week, but let me see. Is it in my, hmm, is it in my, my bullet journal? For those of you guys who are following my bullet journal spreads, I started bullet journaling again. Um, not, it's not something I'm going to do videos for because I'm doing really, really simple things, but... I'll see if I can show you a little peek, just barely, of what I'm working on next week. <laughs> so that, um, that will be coming your way, finally, finally, finally. And yeah, I think that's about it. Question, have you had trouble with the common Rossi? And I haven't used uh, the pan. I used it from the tube and that one was fine. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to fix that. We'll ask Joe if he wants to be a mod and I can I can change him into a mod if he wants that. I don't want to throw that responsibility on anyone if they don't. <laughs> Question, would I do an eye as a bonus in an ink wash? Not for this particular challenge. Um, I've done some ink work before in other videos. If you look up last year's Inktober. Thank you for the wish of safe travels. I hope I get home quickly and efficiently tomorrow. Uh, yes, Venetian Red, uh, I have owed you that color spotlight for months now. I deeply, deeply apologize. They take so much effort and I just have not been in the right headspace to do that with everything I was dealing with last year and into this year and travel. But I'm finally ready. That's gonna be coming at you soon. Um, thank you guys for all your kind words. And I will see you guys next time. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend.